What if someone proposed a bike trip from Sweden to Thailand? Is that even possible? They propose you go down through Eastern Europe, you head towards and through the Middle East, and you take yourself through the long countryside roads of China, down south to Laos and then Thailand. Equipped with nothing but a tent among cultural clashes, conflicts and far out places. Now, that's an interesting proposal, isn't it? If you would ask me, I would say no. No, it's not. I would say stay in your seats for two reasons. First of all, I haven't been able to sit down in one since I got back home. And second, this is where it all started for me. I said to myself again and again before the trip, don't do it, man. It's not as fun as it sounds. But I, I couldn't help it. My mind was already wandering away in excitement like, who knows what this might lead to, what you will see, what you will experience. Explore it, tickle it, tickle the future. Of course you should go. So I went on a trip with my three friends and Mr. Lee. I chose to explore this proposal. I chose to tickle my future. But, but here's the thing. What do you think our biggest challenges were? Unstable areas, danger, crazy, evil people crawling out of their caves, coming after us in the middle of the night, scratching our tent. Yeah, we had a few of those. <laughs> no, not at all. Imagine this instead. Imagine waking up in the country of Iran. When you cross the border coming from Turkey, there's, there's nothing but desert. And you wake up and there's desert as far as you can see. You get on your bike and you start paddling. And the pace sinks as the sun rises. When it's 12 o'clock, the sun hits its peak. It's 40 degrees Celsius, and there's no shadow to be found whatsoever. There are no houses. There are no trees. There's not even any lamp posts. There's nothing. It's you and the sun and your thirst. And you pass down one bottle after the other in hopeless attempts of soothing your burning throat. And at times like these, there's not much talking to your friends. If there is any talking, there's not many answers. If there are answers, just to keep the bad words out of this venue, a good summary of an answer would sound like this. <sighs> and there we have it. Sure, the biking has been tough with harsh circumstances, but all of these external elements always puts more strain on the group itself and its mood than on a physical level. The pain wasn't the challenge. It was how to stay positive and how to stay friends when everyone was in pain that was challenging. It's always easy just to be grumpy, isn't it? If you ask my girlfriend, she would agree. She would say, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> but, but it's always the case, isn't it? By embarking on this journey, however, with my three teammates. We learned about group dynamics and how to make it a successful story the long way. 17,800 kilometers from Sweden to Thailand on a fundraising trip in favor of an orphanage in Muang Mai, Phuket. Through 18 countries for eight months, together in two tents, side by side in exhaustion, hunger, and lack of hygiene. I left Stockholm with two pairs of underwear in my luggage. And it was even one too many, I would say. Even though there were no showers, there were no washing machines, no toilets for most of the time. Just a lot of very, very friendly people helping us on our way. And I want to make this point a bit clearer. For us, it was crucial. The news tells us how dangerous the world is, but what if the world is actually a kind place? What if the world gives more than it takes, especially in economically poor regions? It's true there's an overall bigger threat in certain areas and places with high risks on a macro scale between one country and another. But everywhere you go, face to face, people always show kindness to a kind person. And this is what we found again and again throughout our journey. And on top of that, poor people are so much more accustomed to share their resources. People are so generous, it's amazing. That's so when we moved further into Iran, for example. People were stopping us all the time in the street just to give us food and drinks. 
and sometimes even pure money. So we were left with nothing but our own battles to handle. And I will tell you once again that the real challenge of our journey was different than expected. Not to survive or to avoid theft, but to, but to keep our group of friends together. And this is how we did it. You can all do it with me. So we can put our hands up. Up, up, up. Great. We can put them down. Put one of our hands on your nose. Now put the other hand on someone else's nose. <laughs> Great. Awesome. You can, all, you can all let go now. That's it. That's what we did. Questions? <laughs> In order to get the happiness back into the group and to strengthen our bonds, we would bring ourselves back to the surface part of our conscience. This surface is the most valuable state we have. It's what the great philosophers would have said, to be present, to be in the moment. We, we cannot tie our shoelaces underneath our shoes. Well, we could. But you know what I'm getting at. We do it on top. And it's here on top we tie our bonds as well, in our laughter, in our joy, and in our hula baloo moments. Our group, Kalle, Frederick, Tommy and me, sat down one day in Turkey on a curb outside of a small fruit shop close to the town of Sinop and the Black Sea. And the Black Sea coast is so intense. It goes, it goes up and down all day long, and we had been biking for four hours straight in the heat, and we sat there totally empty. Then one of us started spitting seeds out, out from his mouth, into the street in front of us, from the recently bought cherries of the fruit shop. And all of us caught on. We made this game of spitting seeds as close to the midline of the road as possible. And it was a silly game, but as we sat there shoulder to shoulder, spitting seeds and laughing, it really struck me how little is needed in order to transform one state to another and to create a good feeling. It's a little bit of play. It's a little bit of fun. And you can keep going for miles in whichever project you're working on. So please, play more. Please. I could go down on my knees. But it's always up to you in the end. Let's think about it. What if we would play more? Let's say we have two people. They say, hi, how are you doing? And then they're on, then, and then they're on they greet each other on this level, within these boundaries. Where does such a conversation lead us? Where does it lead, really? It might take us to a business-related relationship, sustainable for the moment, but it will never lead to a healthy relationship in the long run. And I believe all of the people in this room are intelligent enough to succeed in the act of combining a fun, dazzling, fruitful relationship with performance and with business, and with everything you want to do in life, perhaps a bike trip. So play, and play as much as you can, because if there's something I'm really passionate about in this whole wide world, it's the idea of play and playing. It was my part of the trip, and furthermore, it's my big vision that play occurs everywhere and nowhere throughout our society for the sake of our bonds. It's such a powerful way to, to connection and to presence. There's no time to dwell on old tragedies or to ponder future catastrophes. You have to stay present in the moment. To act on the unpredictable lies before you from second to second. And what do I mean with play? With play, I mean everything that interacts with us in an unpredictable way. It could literally be anything. It could be going down a highway on your bike in the middle of the night when it's all black, just watching out for unpredictable rocks on the road, or even worse, fast cars, huge trucks just coming your way. I wouldn't recommend it. But it could also just be, have a playful conversation with a friend. Have a conversation with a stranger at all. It could be in the regular sense of all of our sports, but also just try new things out. Read a book or, or grow a beard. And it's always the same three things that characterize unpredictable play. It's entertainment, it's challenge, and it is development. And entertainment comes from all the surprising moments that so easily opens up for laughter and connection for the people involved. And regardless of what level of performance you play at, you're always faced with the same challenges. It is as hard for girls 10 years old to win their football game 
as it is for the guys in your A-League. And the fact that it's not possible to plan for something unpredictable to the fullest creates fantastic conditions for development. As soon as you plan something, you limit yourself to the quality of what you've just planned. To not make a plan may perhaps, arguable, lead to worse single results, but it will let you flow, raise the bar to heights far above. And one should always remember something new has never been created out of a rigid, sterile approach. It must always be play in thought or in action. Okay. I know it's not always, as in always, always possible to play. As when I was chased with 15 dogs down a mountain in Bulgaria, I honestly thought, this is the end of me. If these beasts catches me, I am dead. I was paddling the fastest I could, and it just wasn't that much fun. Until, until I turned my bike around, and I challenged them. I went, went in and out, did some high fives, and no, I was kidding. We could all laugh about it once I survived, couldn't we? So there's always, or there's two things I would like for you to bring home for me today with this adventure in my back. And I'll pin the first one down. I think the group is our society's greatest component. And that makes the relationships inside the group to our society's most important processes. And to nurture these processes, I want you to Put it in the most straightforward manner as possible. I want you to tickle each other a bit more. A finger to the ribs, or be lucky enough to get in under someone's arms. And when someone says it's not funny, you can tell they're lying, because they're laughing, right? <laughs> and believe me, if someone is serious enough, believe me, you will notice that too. It'll be shown through the eyes. The laughter in between will quieten down, and some, some kicks and punches will be thrown towards you in unintentional spasms, as it's usually referred to. That's why you have to be smooth and quick. Get in there, tickle a bit, and get out, out of reach. <laughs> so we're going to do a little exercise. It's going to be a tickle exercise. Just tickle your neighbor for a bit. However, be careful. Not for punches and kicks, but if you turn to your left to work a little bit of tickling magic over here. Just watch out. It might be coming some hands from your right. We'll go for 10 seconds, right? Ready, set, go. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, look great. I just love how it builds up. Sweet. The first thing is to tickle each other. And the second thing is the idea of tickling the future. Imagine how incredible it would be to grasp what play is doing so well to our relationships and apply it to future by adding a little bit of positive unpredictability. Imagine how cool it would be to put your hands into the sides of future itself and tickle it, to force it to be present by playing with all options available until you find something suitable for yourself, something valuable, your next step in the direction you're heading. And because the future is always ahead of us, the only thing we can do to tickle it is to reach out. Right here and right now. So going on a bike trip like ours, there are endless possibilities of subtle events with the power to change our future, to tickle it. People we meet and places we go to, and I say, let them. Let every little interaction pull you in and out of minor adventures, and some of them might be the best ones ever. You need to explore them. There's a lot of gems to be found, and the thing is, it's impossible to know where they are, where your best memories lies, your most happy moments, your successful times. Just look underneath one rock after the other. If it's not there, go on. And if it's scary to explore it, feel free to go on with my favorite saying fresh in mind. It's always two sides of the same coin. It is something you do is good, or it is funny. And the worse you do, the more humorous it is. 
And our bike trip is a, is a great example of us tickling our future, but this speech is too. This is my second speech ever by myself, and my first one led me here. I never knew where it would lead me, but I, but I embraced the opportunity to take me just anywhere. And I must say, I must say I've been enjoying my talk pretty much so far. <laughs> so what if someone proposed a life trip? Is that even possible? Yes. They propose you go down through the easy-going entertainment of play. You head towards and through the challenges of life. You take yourself through the long, diverse, windy roads of development, all the way down to successful presence. Equipped with nothing but tickling hands amongst failure, downsides, and negativity. Now, that's an interesting proposal, isn't it? If you would have gotten this question, what would your answer be? Thank you.